Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sheep Get Sheared podcast. I'm your host, Austin Creed. My friends, you know, I actually have been really enjoying, despite me being really busy and whatnot with the move coming up to Kansas City, the more I've been out and about, the more a lot of inspirations kind of come to me in the last couple of days. And, you know, the more I'm on Twitter, the more I realize why so many people go with the flow. I'm not shocked by people who don't dare to defy the norms. They don't dare to be different. They kind of just sit back and they listen to what everybody else tells them to do. Oh, you should say this. Or you shouldn't say that. That's not politically correct. Don't do that. Don't do this. I don't blame people for doing that. You know why? Because by and large, people want to be like, right? I mean, that's when, when you were a kid. You wanted to fit in, right? You wanted to... People like you, you didn't want to sit at the t- table alone in the cafeteria. You didn't want to eat bathroom, leave, go to the bathroom and eat your lunch alone in the stalls somewhere. You don't want to have to do any of those things, right? We've been so conditioned to not ask questions, to not say, wait a minute, why would I let, uh, why would I not let a company have a monopoly over my wallet, but over my schmendrick, yeah, they're going to have a monopoly over that, i.e. marriage. Or we don't ask the question of, hey, you know what? Why why is it that I should just listen to my pastor or my rabbi or the imam? Why, why should I just listen to him and not think for myself? Oh, you see, uh, because religion is supposed to be about serving somebody other than yourself. Oh, well, that's nice. So you're telling me that somebody else is going to help serve me? Oh, well, um, uh, you see, um, that's not guaranteed. What do you mean it's not guaranteed? I thought you said that if I treat people nice, they'll treat me nice and we'll live in a good world. Oh, well, you see, that's what I told you and that's what's supposed to happen. But, yeah, um, you see, with the topography and the geography and the economy, it's... Guys, see, here's the problem, okay? People don't, don't want to be different. Why? Because then people play whack-a-mole with them. You disagree with me? Go on to my Twitter page. At Sheep Get Sheared. You look at some of the comments I leave on other people's posts. And the, and the tw- tweets I make. You should look at the stuff that people say back to me. It, it'll, get, it'll make your blood boil. You'll look at me like, oh my god. How do people talk like this? And I, I, I tell you something. I don't do it just to be a shock jock. I mean, who who in the world cares about doing that type of garbage? I'm not an AI program. I have feelings, man. But guess what? The truth sets people off like a rocket. You ever wonder why people like to be lied to? You ever wonder why people love Disney, Time Warner, AT&T, you know, these, these companies that make these big movies about love and superpowers and all this type of stuff, right? You wonder why they make billions off of it? Because people don't like reality. Reality sucks. And so what they want is for... I'll leave you guys an example. The other day, there was this picture of this woman who was like... She was overweight. And people were saying, oh, we know these IG models. You know, don't let them confuse you. Men would still wipe up a woman like this. And I looked at the picture and I was like, unfortunately, I think that they're right. You know why? Because most dudes have a zero standards when it comes to chicks. None. Nothing. Zero. Why? Because they're not told to. They're told that, oh, you have you have opinions about women's, women's bodies? Oh, and you're, and you're a misogynist pig. You're a bourgeois capitalist pig. How dare you have an opinion? Now, now and then you ask, wait a minute, but isn't it true that you think that a man should have six-figure income, a six-pack, uh, six inches down below. Well, of course, yeah, because that's the better. That's the minimum. That's my standard. But then, why does it matter if I don't want to marry an overweight woman? Oh, it doesn't matter. It just makes you gay. Wait, wait, wait. I thought I just said that I don't like overweight women. I didn't say I didn't like women. Period. No, no, no. You're still gay. And it's the same people who will call you gay that will have like a rainbow flag in their bio, and you're like, wait a minute. So you support these people, uh huh? But you're using that's gay as a slur against my masculinity. Uh-huh. You don't see how that doesn't really work? You don't see how that doesn't really go together? 
this is how stupid the average person is. This is why I think the average person is a sheeple, a sheep person. They're like a, they're like a brain and a sheep in a, in a field, in a herd. They don't have any original ideas. They don't have any original thoughts. All they do is what they do what they're told in plain English. And my friends, I know a lot of us, we've all kind of been in that position. I've told you the story before on the show. When I was in Bosnia, which is a country in the Balkan, the Balkans that's mostly Muslim, I was on the bus, and on the front of the bus, when we get, were getting closer to the town, there was a shepherd who led his flock across the, the road, but it wasn't all at once. A couple of sheep would go across the road, and then a couple more, and then a couple more, but only when they saw another sheep go across the road. Nobody took the nobody took the step. The one sheep would take the step, and then ten others would go with him. Then the, the another one would see the ten go, then one more would go, and then ten more would follow. It was super rare that you saw any sheep take any amount of step outside of the herd and what everybody else was doing. But this is why part of the biblical bachelor lifestyle is to question everything and to come to your own conclusions. You're not supposed to be a, a, a robot that just listens to everything and doesn't question anything. That's what was called a useful idiot by Vladimir Lenin, a famous man from the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia in the 19, in 1917-1918. The useful idiots were the people who didn't know any better. They heard what they thought they liked, and then they went with the program. They didn't do research. They didn't ask questions. They just were did what they were told in plain English. So when you dare to be different and you dare to ask questions, don't let these normie, oxygen-thieving morons who are dumber than most AI programs today, don't let those people tell you to shame you out of doing what you want to do i don't care if you used to know them in high school i don't care if you used to work with them i don't care if they're your ex-wife i don't care if they're your so-called friends no ignore that shit do not let them put you back in a position that's going to compromise you and make you miserable you think the average person is happy being a mindless drone you think they're happy the average person's fucking stupid and miserable on top of it all. So, if you're going to be miserable, whether you're a normie or not, why in the world are you going to be middle, be stupid on top of being miserable? Huh? You look at the... I'll tell you guys something. I go to the mall often when I'm writing books. I'm working on two books right now. Hopefully, both will be published within the next year. If I can find the funding, I'll tell you that right now. It's not. It's not cheap. Anybody who wants to write a book in the audience, it's not cheap, especially if you want to do it correctly and you're not getting uh, a huge cash advance from a big publishing house, which I don't have. It's very expensive and it's very time consuming. But nonetheless, I go to different coffee shops in the area and I sit down and I work. And part of the part of it's about the work and the other part of it is the people watch. You know, it's important to have your pulse on society because that's when you can tell whether you're in touch or you're out of touch with reality. And if you ever want to look and see what's really going on, you go to coffee shops, you go to bars, you go to lounges, you go to the grocery store, you get that you watch, you shut the fuck up, and you lo you listen. You open your ears, you listen, and you watch what's happening. You look at how people interact. Not to be a creepy weirdo who, like, has a pair of binoculars and you're just sitting there like, ooh, I can't wait to see what's happening. No, I'm not talking about doing that dumb crap. No, no, I'm talking about you literally, you, I'll be working, and I'll be sitting there, and I'm typing away, editing, working, writing, and I'll look around, and I'll see dudes who are out of shape, look like they're happy as a lark with their girlfriend or their wife or whoever, looking like a busted Pillsbury biscuit can, fat as fuck, out of shape, probably couldn't run a mile to get to escape from a, from a, from a, a serial killer. They couldn't run a mile to save their life without having a heart attack. And I sit there and I'm like, oh my God, this is what the average guy lives for right here. To be seen out in public with the wife and the kids and the, act like he's, you know, act like his, his, his wife's wife booty is still nice and like the Instagram models he sees on the internet. And I look at this and I'm like, this is what the average guy will spend his entire life working for is this right here. And I sit there and this is not one guy. It's not one girl or one couple. I see this all the time. The dude will be out. It's rare I see a dude who's got the muscles and the tattoos. And he actually looks like he, 
he's like all buff and he's strong and he's tough and he could take me out. It's rare I meet somebody like that. Not that I'm some MMA fighter, but I've been in the military. I, I got some basic training. I've done a little, mar little bit of martial arts. Not a lot, but a little. And I see these guys everywhere that I go. These guys who are like, oh, I don't know if I can go out drinking this weekend. I better go ask my wife. <laughs> this is a beta cuck moron losers. I'm surrounded by these people. I know you all probably are too. To the point where you think you're crazy for wanting to be a biblical bachelor, wanting to be a free agent. Shout out to Coach Greg Adams. Be somebody who wants to be outside the norm, you think you're crazy. Being surrounded by these morons who might as well be an AI program with their personality and their behaviors and everything. They might as well be actual, actual robots. They don't have anything that's unique. Nothing. All they do is believe what's told to them by the internet on their on their social media feed, their news feed. It, it's unbelievable to me. I mean, I love my mother, God bless her, but I wake up in the morning because I'm at the house right now. With my, I'm at my parents' house for the next couple of weeks as I'm going through this move. I wake up in the morning, I go outside in my room and I look at her and I'm like, She's one of those people that, like, you ever met somebody that doesn't use headphones? They play, like, their TikTok videos and their YouTube videos, like, for the entire house or the entire, like, neighborhood to listen. You ever seen those people on, like, a plane or at your house? It's, it's, it's insufferable. But, regardless, I love her. But, you know, use some damn headphones. Anyways, they, it's the same crap. They'll, they'll watch people cooking. They'll watch people portray this actual image that are not living it you think these influencers are out here living this life they're pretending like they're living on the internet no they're not they're not actually different they're just liars uh, but you, you want to know how you can tell a difference between somebody who's actually living what they talk about versus not you look at what they don't necessarily tell you you look at what they do gentlemen do you see me working at a you can see me working at some corporate job, slaving away for somebody while talking about being independent and thinking for yourself. No, I'm going to be a contractor who works on, on my own schedule for myself. You think I don't practice what I preach? It's solid to that. It's not. And I know a lot of you wish you would learn this information like 50 years ago, 30 years ago. Trust me, I wish I could learn this 10 years ago. Why? Because I'd be so much far ahead of the game. But the problem is a lot of people, they don't have the courage to be different. They want to just sit on their behind and get everybody else to pay for them. Get everybody else to do everything for them while they sit back and be miserable anyway. I mean, you can't believe this. You just simply can't believe this. But it's true. And you see that you see schmucks out in the, in the streets who act like they know everything, but they can't even run a mile. They act like they have the entire world with their with their wife who looks like she could have her own moon orbiting her. And I'm like, this, this is this is what you live your life for, guys. You know how unpopular it is when I talk about uh, men should not be limiting themselves to whether it's the one woman, one place, one religious faith. You ever you know how much backlash I get for that in my personal life? I don't talk about it because I don't want to depress you or discourage you. But let me tell you. There are a lot of... I've lost friends over this stuff. You think that I, I, I talk about this stuff on the internet and then I get off, the, I, I turn the mic off and I go back being an oxygen-thieving moron, normie, idiot who doesn't actually believe what he's talking about? No. I've lost friends over this. I've lost business over this. I couldn't... I probably could never work another normie job ever again. Why? Because a lot of people that I know who have a lot of influence, they would never hire me. Not because of that, I don't do good work, but because of who I am, how I operate, how I talk. Yeah. I really hope that I'm not projecting too much on the show today. I really hope I'm not, but I probably am. And uh, uh, it, I'm not trying to, but, you know, when you're going through a lot of change, you're going through things in your life that, that are largely out of your control, it could eat you. And if that's you listening to the show today, you're not alone. Trust me. Oh, you're in very good company, as it turns out. Well, you know what, my friends? If you want to be like those guys I was talking about who were, you know, they're overweight, they got their maybe chubby, overweight wife who could divorce them at any time and take the kids and the half the stuff. Oh, I know they'll say they'll never do that, of course, because 
why in the world would you ever, you know, tell people the truth? Gentlemen, anybody who tries to use your emotions at the back door through your logic, please cut those people off. Please tell them to kick rocks and never speak to you again. Or at the very least, if they're like family and you got to see them on Thanksgiving and Christmas or Hanukkah, just just tell them to like go, just tell them that like, yeah, hey, it was great talking to you. I'm done with this conversation and leave. There's something to be learned, but a lot of people, they don't really know what's going on. They think they do. But when you start talking to them, they only know the pebble in the shoe. They don't know the boulder that's rolling towards them like the Indiana Jones. They're not trying to run away from the boulder. They're trying to just sit there and check their Facebook. They're not trying to run away. They're not trying to avoid the juggernaut. They're not trying to avoid the the boulder curling at them a million miles an hour. They're just like, eh, whatever. I don't see it. Doesn't matter. That's reality for most people. They don't see it until it hits them in the face and they're like, oh my God, I can't believe it. And they act like they're shot and I sit there and I'm like, you gotta be joking. How did you not see what's happening? And they're like, well, what do you mean? And I'm like, oh my God, do I really have to start here? Anyways, my friends, this is why we need to dare to be different. I am sick and tired of having to watch these people. And I'll have to do it for the rest of my life. I know you will have too. But this is why I like to be alone. Not because I can't have friends. Not because I can't get laid. Not any of those things. I introduced the concept of being a vocel last episode. Being a voluntary celibate. Because having sex with chicks ain't free, bro. I don't understand how people are out here on the internet giving you active advice about how to run game and how getting it for free. You don't get anything in life for free, moron. Well, hi, my name is uh, Mr. Random Greg Guy, and I'm here to tell you how to run game and get all these chicks and swing this thing and get all these chicks for free. And... Oh my god. People are making me... I lose IQ points even talking about these people. Guys, let me tell you something. If you think that getting chicks is free, you are so stupid. Now, is it true that Chad, Tyrone, Pookie, Ray Ray, these archetypes, they get it for cheaper than you? Probably, yeah. Do they get it for free? Uh, no. Because that's the women's ultimate leverage. You think they're going to give that up for free? No. No. <laughs> the whole thing's fucking dumb. <clears throat> but, look guys, this is all we... See, everything we've talked about thus far is different. How often do you hear people talk like this? Answer, probably never. Or very, very little. This is why you come back for more, right? I'm like, I'm like ear porn. You listen to me and you're like, oh my god, I can't believe you said that. I mean, I thought it, but like, I can't believe you said it. Ah! Because the truth is more explicit than the most triple X pornography you could find. Because nobody talks about it, with very rare exception. Nobody wants to discuss the truth. Nobody wants to discuss these realities we all live with. Then everybody wants to talk around, uh, dismiss, romanticize, play it down. I'm not going to do that garbage. Why? Why should I have to pretend like this isn't happening, that men are settling for subpar women who are blackmailing them? You want me to get down and dirty with it? I'll show you the proof. I'll get down and dirty with it. You think the average man... If he knew he had better options and he knew that his marriage would devolve into basically a roommate situation while she gained 100 pounds, you think the average guy would still get married today? Fuck no. But guess what? He's doing it now because nobody's telling him this stuff. And if they tell it to him, they'll have 50, for every one dude who tells him that, they'll have 50 men and 50 women tell him that, oh, that's just misogyny, that doesn't exist. Or, oh, don't worry, you don't have to, like, invest in stuff and get your money out of the bank because the banks are trying to screw you over. Oh, no, they'll never hear that. No, 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 of course not. Because if they do that, then guess what? Oh, he must be anti-Semi because bankers are, are secretly, you know, Jews. No, it's not true. I'm a Jewish guy. Trust me, I know the stereotypes of my own people, and it's disgusting. I know it. But nobody wants to discuss these things. Why? Because they're afraid. Oh. I'm not afraid of this crap. I'm more afraid of living a lie, living a total fake reality. That's what I'm more afraid of. I'm going to get off this show in a couple minutes and I'm going to go smoke a cigar and grab a drink. Why? Because I'd rather do that than deal with some bitch's problems.
or deal with some bitch ass men who aren't about their problems. And I'm not dealing with it. What about you? What are you gonna do? You gonna go sit back and think about how you wish you could quit your job and go do what you really want to do? You gonna sit there and pretend like you love your life when you hate it? You gonna sit there and act like your mediocre existence is actually what you want? Or are you gonna live the life you wanna be living and go back to that? That's what I want you to think about. That's what I want you to ask yourself, because that's important. That's being different. Not just saying you're going to do something, but actually doing it. That's different. Not blowing hot air like the politicians do, and they don't do shit but make themselves richer, and screw everybody else around until it's time to get elected, and then they bring out the hogwash, and get the garbage and the, and the bullshit, and then, and then sell it to you all over again. Anyways, my friends... Let me know what you what you heard. If you thought it was just a royal rambling bunch of garbage, I pity you. But let me know what you have to say. How you feel about this today. Let me know. I know I'm not alone with being fed up and selling me saying it like it is. Anyways, my friends, take care. Think for yourself. I'm out of here. Peace.